Hello everyone and welcome once again to Thursdev. I'm your host Luke, and today we continue our Make Our Game series with a talk about the actual development process. To this point, we've looked at the many questions that need to be answered to define your project, and we've also gone over the components of the prototype and pre-alpha. Today, we'll be broadening our view and taking a look at a more method-oriented part of game development. Of course, we've already talked about doing development itself, but we haven't yet really discussed what methods are used to ensure a smooth development process, or how we even measure progress in a massive software project like a game. There are many, many different ways that studios go about organizing the development of their games, and ultimately no two are truly alike, but in the past decade or so, the method of project organization known as Agile has gained a large amount of traction in the game development space. You may have heard about Agile outside of game development as well, and honestly, this episode of Thursday could very easily be applied to software projects outside of gaming as well. Ultimately though, what Agile is, is a development methodology that emphasizes adaptive and iterative development of a product. While more traditional forms of development had the creation of the itemized feature list marked the sort of beginning and end of the iteration process, barring any major shakeups, this development process, commonly referred to as waterfall, doesn't always work for games, especially one with lots of moving parts as it were. The issue with just working down a feature list, handing one task off to the next member of the team down a line, is that there's a chance that something we develop along the process is going to turn out to be less fun than we intend, and those features frequently look more toward distant future tasks to complement them. Which ultimately means that if something does end up sucking, you need to backtrack a significant amount of time in order to rectify your mistakes. Careful planning can certainly work to mitigate this, but many industry veterans have found that treating a project not as a single entity, but a smaller group of discrete features helps us greatly in learning early when something doesn't work. As per our prototyping phase, as mentioned in the last video, in game development, our greatest enemy is not knowing that something sucks until it's too late to do anything about it. Which is why Agile, and most commonly the Scrum, are employed. It aims to do away with a lot of the red tape of software development by avoiding unnecessary time documenting or planning, and instead fast-paced collaborative development engagements. The Agile Manifesto, created in 2001, is a pretty short document, so I'll just read it for you here. We are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it. Through this work we've come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools, Working software over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. And responding to change over following a plan. That is, while there's value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. And then a list of names of the manifesto's drafting members. Likewise, on the same website, they go into their 12 principles of Agile, which are as follows. We follow these principles. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Welcome changing requirements even late in development. Agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. Deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter time scale. Business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. Build projects around motivated individuals, give them the environment and support they need, and trust them to get the job done. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. Working software is the primary measure of progress. Agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done, is essential. The best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. At regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. In short, Agile's all about delivering a working product in as short a time and as efficiently as possible. I can get behind that. For those of you coming up through this entire series, though, you'll probably note that I'm a fan of documenting and planning, but for all of my planning as paramount bluster, I ultimately agree with all of the above. 
My planning, as involved as it is, is so that we can anticipate what we'll need when we begin, as a game is a piece of software that has usually a huge number of moving parts, each one often able to be accessed in multiple ways by a player, and jumping in headfirst without any idea of what we're getting ourselves into is pretty foolish. While most Agile projects are asking a client to define the product, we're defining what the game will be before our players get to try it, usually. So pure Agile development doesn't exactly work, and even if we define our studio executives as the client, a game with no plan will become a mishmash of disconnected ideas far too quickly, and that's why we plan. But once we've planned, and have a bird's eye view, we still need to develop, and we always need to be ready to rework if things don't turn out correctly. So how do we go about doing this? You'll find that in video game development, the actual implementation of the Scrum process for Agile development is different everywhere you look, but Scrum is still the usual name of the game. So what does that mean? I'm going to link scrum.org in the description below, but I'd like to say that while the process is solid, a lot of the ways they describe it on their own terms is a very pie-in-the-sky ideal world scenario, and they focus too much on a few buzzwords. So instead of using their own words, I'm going to summarize. Scrum is a process of individual feature development cycles, where you build a list of features, cherry pick them, spend a week or two at a time developing them, test when finished, and either call them done or fix them. Pretty simple. We've built up a fantastic list of features for our game and listed them as well as their development time in our production plan. It would be a shame to use that only as a sales tool, so we won't. The production plan is the foundation upon which we'll build our initial development backlog, populated by what's referred to in Scrum as user stories, which are basically statements from the perspective of a user, or in our case a player, that say what they expect to happen in the game. This could be handled as straight user stories, like as a player I want to teleport between any surface with my portal gun, or we could take our feature list and adapt it, teleportation between surfaces using cast portals. We'll then gather up all members of the team that will be needed to make this feature work, and we scrum. We talk about the feature, we plan out what will be needed using our feature plan as a guide, and we assign it a point value based on time to complete. This will allow us to understand how much bandwidth we have, how long each sprint is going to need to be, and how many tasks we can fit into one sprint. Sprinting refers to a single development cycle. During this cycle, we finish the feature. We build a working prototype, if you will, by doing each task as a team, and daily checking in and delegating work as it's necessary. Once our feature is working in its entirety, with all of its component parts ready, we test it. If it's not satisfactory, we take it back to the drawing board, as it were, find what's wrong with it, scrum and sprint again until it's right. And if it's good enough, we move on. This cyclical process ensures that for each feature, we're sure that it works and that it's fun. It's extremely important that we're frequently checking our work as it were because even the most adept designer may have a perfect game in their head, but rarely is that the product that gets shipped, and game development is, or at least should be, a collaborative process. And that's where Scrum really shines for game development. So start building the game, piece by piece, and always be sure that your product is fun while you're building it. If it ends up sucking, it very possibly could have been avoided if you'd known sooner. Thanks for joining me today in this episode of Thursday. I hope that you found it entertaining and educational, or at least one of the above. If you'd like to join our merry band of enthusiasts who love to play and create games, feel free to subscribe, and with luck, the fickle gods of YouTube will let you know when we upload our new videos daily at noon Atlantic time. I do hope that I'll see you next time as well, but until then, thanks once again for stopping by, and take care.